Patek Philippe is one of the most desired watch brands in the world. There's no doubt about that. It's worldwide known. Like for example, we have Rolex, you know, it's the you made it watch. When you make some money, when you're a bit successful, you buy a Rolex. Then you go a step further. There's Seip or the Maspiget. There's Vacheron Constantin, there's Le Cult. But then you go a bit, well, not a bit. You go way, way up and then you find Patek. And to be honest, this is a whole nother level in watchmaking. Patek has been an established brand for decades, centuries probably. A long time ago, in the 70s, which is a long time ago, almost 50 years ago, with the era of Gerald Gent as a designer, it was probably some of the golden ages of watchmaking. And Patek with the Nautilus made history. It's the most sought after watch ever. But it's, the Nautilus is too thin, too streamlined, too elegant for, for a sports watch, if you know what I mean. Because most of the, of the sport watches of the era, the Royal Oak, the Reverso, the Nautilus, are now considered dress watches, elegant watches, watches you wear with a suit. So the need for a sporty watch, a really sporty watch, but with the same DNA as the Nautilus was needed. So in 1997, Patek introduced the new line, the Nautilus, which is a more robust build. Still, of course, with the DNA of Patek, but with a really more robust build. And of course, the rubber strap, which, you know, made an impression. There was mixed opinions about it. A lot of people didn't like it, so some did. But it was the same effect that Hublot had when they introduced precious metal watches with rubber straps. And of course, it finds a lot of mixed opinions because it, this watch has a lot of zeros in its, in its price. So it's not, you know, so because it's something that generates a bit, a bit of controversy. Now, of course, this watch has the DNA of the Nautilus, but in a more, more robust and sporty way. The dial is, it has the same checkered pattern but in the Yakonot, it's a bit more sporty, bigger, and, and it feels sportier. And of course, the rubber strap, which in this case is not the original. This one is from Temple Mat, which I will link down below if you want to buy one for your Patek, for, for your other watches. But it's still super comfortable, super soft. And the thing with Patek, obviously the Nautilus and the, and the Aquanaut, is that when you put it on, they are the most comfortable watches. And that comes from a guy that handles maybe 2,000, 3,000 watches a year because I sell them, not because I buy, well, I buy them and then I sell them. But there's something special about how the way Patek feels in your wrist. And of course, the rubber strap, made the comfortable way more comfortable, if that makes sense. The great part about this Patek is obviously when you turn it around, it's something out of this world. You find the typical Patek rotor in 24 karat gold, obviously everything handmade, and the, the cross Patek logo on the center of the, of the rotor, of course, hand engraved, but it is perfect. It's, it's just perfect. The finishing, the bevels, the Patek, Patek hallmark, everything that shows how quality filled this watch is, which is ridiculous. And what I really like about this watch is that it is a complicated, uncomplicated watch, if that makes sense. It has a complication or the ability to have two time zones. So you have these two pushers that if you push the top one, the hour hand goes back. If you push the bottom one, the hour hand goes forwards. That's when, when you travel a lot, you need these types of things. I said before that Patek needed the Aquanaut because you feel safer if you take the Aquanaut, which has Aqua on its name, but 
if you have a Patek Aquanaut travel time, of course you have a private jet. So you fly, let's say Mexico City, New York, you have the two time zones, home time and local time. But what I really like is the pushers. And I mean that it's a, a complicated, uncomplicated watch because it's very intuitive to use. It's not a delicate watch, it's a robust watch, but you can feel in the pushers. The pushers are so soft that you can feel the quality. And I really like that. And I found that, for example, when you use a mechanical chronograph, an automatic chronograph, the pushers are so hard in most instances it's almost like a mechanical push, but for example, the Polaris chronograph of Jojo Le Cult, the pushers are so, so soft that you can feel the quality and craftsmanship of those movements. And also what I really like about the watch is that the pushers give a sense of symmetry to the case with the crown guard and the crown, which of course, you know, it's Patek. The finishing is top-notch, spectacular. Everything in this watch is perfect. It's comfortable. Because, you know, like, you get the Nautilus, which is streamlined. It's elegant. And then you get its rugged brother, the, the extreme brother, you know, which is good. It's really good. Now, the problem with these watches, and I would say it's not a problem, is that when you start collecting, you try to convince yourself that, you know, a watch that's worth $500,000 are a good value price proposition. Even, you know, 1,000 bucks, 5,000 bucks, 10,000 bucks, you're like, wow, that's a good watch for the money. But then you come across watches like this that are worth upwards of $30,000, in which you understand what real craftsmanship is, and you understand the value, but not, not of the money, because when we're talking about pieces like this, it's not worth it to talk about money. It's more about how you feel, how this watch makes you feel. When you look at it, how do you feel? When you look at the gold rotor, everything, the finishing, the Patek Philippe seal, how does it feel? Because if you have enough money to buy a $30,000 watch just because you have the money laying around, yeah, money is out of the question. But just, just talking about inversion-wise, this watch is worth it. You buy it at $34,000 and one hour later, you can sell it upwards to $80,000. So it's a great investment. So you buy this watch, you can wear it for some years and then you can decide to to sell it, you almost triple your investment or even more. But you can also choose to save it because Patek say you never own a Patek. You just take care of it for the next generation because this is one of the watches that I would like my son, when I die, to take out from the safe and be like, yeah, my old man had good taste, you know? And maybe he can wear it and then he can sell it and he, he can make money or he can give it to his son and then his son will give it to his son. And that's what this is all about. This is not about money. Money comes and goes. And now the, the problem or happy problem that I have with this watch, it's very difficult to convince myself that there will be a, a watch as good as this one. Obviously I move watches more of the thousand, two thousand, even five thousand dollar range but I really like this watch. And it's gonna be hard to come back to reality from three, four figure watches to this. Because when you hold this, when you feel this, you can feel the craftsmanship, the perfectionism that comes with this watch. And you understand why it's worth what it's worth. So it's gonna be difficult, but I want one. So I'm gonna to have to save some money and then invest some money on this watch. What do you think? <laughs>